But let's have a look at why sunshine is one of the laws of health. The ultraviolet rays from the sun, particularly UVB rays, the ultraviolet rays from the sun, they hit the skin and they form a, they, they cause a form of cholesterol. Did everyone hear that? Cholesterol just under the skin and they convert the cholesterol to vitamin D. And vitamin D is essential. Vitamin D is essential for the assimilation of calcium. Calcium's called the king. And because it's called the king, it's been misunderstood. So what does it mean when calcium is called the king? Well, well, calcium gets into the body, when it gets into the cell, all the other minerals piggyback on the back of calcium. That's why it's called the king. But the worst thing you can do for your body is take calcium supplements. Because bones aren't made of calcium. Is that a surprise? Bones are not made of calcium. And we have a situation today where bones are breaking down. Dentists are making a fortune. You see, that's the only exposed bone out of teeth that are breaking down. Osteoporosis, the breaking down of bones, the brittle of bones. Do you know God never meant bones to deteriorate like they do? Bones are not made of calcium. They're made of 12 minerals and 64 trace. So let's look at those 12 minerals. Yes, calcium and chromium and boron and iron, <clears throat> magnesium, manganese, selenium, silica, sulfur, potassium, phosphorus, and zinc. That's what bones are made of and 64 trace minerals. So it's not rocket science. What does our bones need, ladies? Minerals. <laughs> so where do we get minerals in that amount, in that proportion, in that balance? Dr. Robert Thompson in his book, The Calcium Lie, he claims that the clearest indicator of a creator God is seawater, because seawater has all of these minerals in the exact balance and proportion as is found in the human body. Did you know in the war, the Navy, if a man needed a blood transfusion, they would transfuse him with seawater because the body can convert it very quickly into blood. So all the body tissues, the bones, everything in our body swims in a fluid and it's seawater. Dr. Jacques de Langry, a French doctor, he called our internal fluids our internal ocean. <laughs> but this also includes our bones. The good news is you don't have to drink seawater. You can take a crystal of the Celtic salt. Baha salt, Celtic salt, they both have 82 minerals. You see seawater, seawater sea contains 92 minerals. Whereas the Celtic salt, or the Baha salt, the Celtic salt is from, uh, it's hand harvested sea salt from a pristine area on the coast of France, Brittany. In fact, it's about four million acres and the French government have said that it's a heritage zone, so it cannot be contaminated. And it's a hand harvested sea salt. That's the Celtic salt and the Baha salt is from another pristine area, there are still a few on the planet, on the Mexican coast. And both of them contain approximately 82 minerals. On Friday I'm going to explore salt in more detail. What about the Himalayan salt? The Himalayan salt is, is harvested from an area that used to have an internal sea in it. It doesn't have as many magnesiums, that's why it's not wet. It's about 75 minerals, so it's fairly close. 
Having a little bit of salt before every glass of water, if you're not used to it, start small. And also putting it on our potatoes. What's a baked potato without salt? What's avocado and tomato on sourdough toast without salt? We can talk about food today. Because your tummies are full. Our palate tells us we need salt. The Bible says, I believe it's the best medical book we have. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Old English, I love the poeticness of Old English. How does the salt lose its savour? I'd like to suggest that the salt that we have on the supermarket shelves today has lost its savour, all of its minerals. Do you know how many minerals it has? Two, sodium chloride. And they are such harsh minerals. If you were to mix that sodium chloride with water to make up seawater and put fish from the ocean in it, they'd all die. So just as the fish need the balance of the sea, so do we. So you can get these minerals by using the Celtic salt, just a little, but you don't need much. You can also get these minerals from dark green leafy vegetables. And you will find that every main meal, we will serve you dark green leafy vegetables. And I've got some good news. I don't know whether it's today or tomorrow, but we're gonna, I think we're gonna have collard greens. When you cook greens, you don't lose the minerals. You've still got those minerals. The broth that we give you not to, at night are all the vegetables cooked in water, all the minerals go in the water, and then we give you that to drink. And that replaces the minerals you may have lost in the big sweat in the steam sauna. Some people love that broth so much, they go home and make a big saucepan of it, freeze it into a little section, and have it in the evening. I think you'll agree with me, it's quite delicious. It's a nice little nighttime nap. Um, because we need minerals. One of the problems is today, the minerals are being taken out of the body. We talked about how they're, they're not in the soil, so they're not in the food, so people are eating food that doesn't have enough minerals. That's why the Celtic salt is such a great mineral supplement. Don't balk at the price. Yes, it's more than the refined salt, but oh, how much more are you getting it? When you don't buy calcium tablets anymore, you can put that money towards buying a better quality salt. So the problem today, and that's where temperance comes in, which means not taking anything into the body that will harm it, and taking in moderation the good things. You want strong bones, you've got to stop the stimulants especially the refined sugar, and there's no need to have refined sugar because we've got some wonderful sweetness in honey, in maple syrup, in the palm. The palm or the coconut sugar is just the crystallized nectar from the palm flower. Because they're in a balanced form, they're not going to leach your minerals out. Tomorrow we're going to look at the acid alkaline in the balance. and you in the body and you will see that when people are eating high acid foods that also causes a leaching of calcium to come out. So you can imagine if people are eating things that are causing the calcium to be taken out and they're not replacing it, then their bones are going to break down, aren't they? When I had my cast changed after four weeks. I had an x-ray and the bones were healing very nicely after my break. The uh, nurse that was changing the cast, he said, do you have osteoporosis? I said, no. He said, have you had a test? I said, no. And then I realized how silly that sounded. <laughs> well, how do I know that I don't have osteoporosis? Well, when my body slipped and went up in the air and slammed down on that wrist, on that big rock. I think if I had osteoporosis, there would have been a lot more broken bones. <laughs> In fact, they kept saying, is there anything else? I said, no, it's just, this is the only one that's speaking to me. Everything else works. Our bones should not deteriorate. They should stay strong. The Hunzas that live in the Himalayan mountains 
reported to be some of the healthiest people on the planet. They don't have doctors or nurses or police in their communities. They eat food in its natural state. They eat, they eat organic food because they don't have chemicals. They drink the pure water from the mountains and they're, and they're not drinking cow's milk every day. Cow's milk delivers calcium to cows because they've got four stomachs. They have the ability to break it down. But by the way, where do the cows get their strong bones? Uh, grass, <laughs> from the grass that they're eating because those dark green leafy vegetables are very high in minerals. But back to the Hunzas, that's where polo came from. They really like that game on the horses, you know, where they hit the ball. And sometimes they fall off and they don't have hospitals. They're not breaking their bones because their bones are so strong because the food that they're eating is high in minerals and they're not eating the stimulants that are leaching it out. Another reason why bones deteriorate are people not getting enough sun. How much sun do we need? Well, how long is a piece of string? It can be one inch long or it can be uh, 10 yards long. It depends on you, it depends on your skin color. If you have dark skin, you need about 10 times the sun that I need. And by the way, you can endure 10 times the sun that I can. That's where you're the doctor. So when I was in Bali a couple of years ago, Michael and I had a holiday, I went down by the pool every day to lay in the sun and get a tan and I didn't have sunscreen, I had my watch. 15 minutes front, 15 minutes back, under the umbrella. Because I knew that if I laid out for half an hour, my skin would burn. And if my skin burns, I've now damaged the skin. And now I can't go back into the sun for the rest of my holidays. Have you seen the ingredients in the, in the sunscreen. <laughs> and our skin is millions of little mouths. I don't want any more chemicals to go into my body than, and I choose not to put them in, but we are exposed in some ways that we don't choose to be. By the end of the week, I had a nice tan and now I can endure half an hour's sun because I have a because I have a tan. I have blue eyes and I have what they call milky skin. <laughs> so I have to go little by little by little. There's a bit of common sense there. The research is showing that six to 10 sunburns in your lifetime can double your risk of skin cancer. People have been living under the sun for thousands of years. It's only in the last 80 years that skin cancer has really risen. And I was interested, there's a book by a, a man, his surname is Wishart. And he's written some really good books on uh, vitamin D. And he gives one study on Norwegians and they found that the skin cancer rates had increased by something like 200%, which is phenomenal. And what they traced it to it was somewhere between the mid-90s and the early 2000s. And what they found, there were two factors that were contributing to this. One was the Norwegians are spending more time inside and less time outside. So vitamin D deficiency was contributing to their skin cancer. And number two, when they do go outside, they believe what the media says and they cover themselves with sunscreen. So what they are finding that sunscreen is actually contributing to the vitamin D deficiency that we're seeing and also contributing to skin cancer. So good amounts of vitamin D deficiency can actually protect you from skin cancer. There are 2,500 receptor sites on the DNA to vitamin D. We cannot function effectively without vitamin D. We cannot heal without vitamin D. Vitamin D is essential and where do we get it? We get it from the sun. But we get it from the UVB rays. If the window is closed and you're sitting in the sun, you're not getting UVB. It's the UVA rays that come through and they can actually burn quite quickly, the UVA. When you put sunscreen on, it blocks UVB. 
So we need to have our skin exposed to the sunshine. So the ultraviolet rays from the sun hit the skin and they convert a form of cholesterol just under the skin to vitamin D. And it takes about two hours to develop that vitamin D. So if you lay out in the sun and then go and have a shower and wash yourself with soap and wash away all your oils, you're not going to get your vitamin D. It needs two hours. But if you're lying in the sun and you get hot and you dive in the pool or in the sea, um, you, you won't wash your vitamin D away. Actually, if you dive into a chlorinated pool, that chlorine on the, on the skin does inhibit your ability to uptake the vitamin D. So if you're gonna dive in a pool, dive in a fresh pool, dive in a lake, dive in a river, dive in the sea, they won't affect your, your body, your skin's production of the vitamin D. And if you have a shower and wash yourself with soap, washing all your oils away, and go and lay in the sun, you won't get vitamin D because that layer of natural oil is needed on the skin. So there are a few things that we need to be mindful of to be able to access our vitamin D. It wasn't until 1920 it was finally acknowledged that rickets was a vitamin D deficiency. Medicine has cured three diseases, rickets, beriberi and pellagra. What are those three? They're just deficiency diseases. That's all they are. And they came about when people started refining food. And again, not spending as much time in the sunshine. This is what bones need. So when they finally acknowledged that rickets was a vitamin D deficiency, Nurses would give mothers classes showing, showing them how to put their babies and their children in the sun. Do they still have those classes? No. What are mothers told today? Get your children out of the sun. I know in Australia, they've now put um, shade cloth over all the playgrounds. Children are not allowed outside unless they've got a hat and sunscreen on. And guess what's returning? Rickets is returning. You've also got children, instead of climbing trees and riding bikes and skateboards, they're inside on technology. So that's another contributing factor. And the devitalized food and the sugar. So you've got all of these things coming together. I raised my children in a rainforest. We ate all our own food. They fell out of Tarzan vines, trees. They fell off horses, no, no broken broken bones. No. In fact, this, this break is the first break I've had in my life, except for last year when I broke my little toe. That's the first break that I've had in my life. So obviously it's an illustration that the bones are strong. I didn't give my children cow's milk. I gave them lots of vegetables. We had lots of minerals and they never had a broken bone. In fact, none uh, oh, my daughter Jessica jumped over a fence and her scarf got caught and she broke her ankle, but that happened to her when she was about 38. That's an illustration that the bones are strong. So I took my children to the dentist. I think the eldest was 14, the youngest was about four. And the dentist said, your children's teeth astonish me. They're so strong. There's no decay. She said, one child has a little decay, but it appears it's in a tooth where, between teeth where the food gets caught. And she said, what's astonishing is a little bit of decay started, but it stopped because the tooth was so strong. I didn't give my children sugar, but about three times a week, I would make them a delicious dessert. Children like sweet things, but you can change their tastes and you can train their tastes. We always had dessert after the meal had been eaten. Your eyes need sun. In his book, Better Eyesight Without Glasses, Dr. William Bates, he almost lost his license over re writing that book. Very interesting book. And the last chapter of the book gives a summary of everything your eyes need. And what interested me, here's the summary. <laughs> We need to be breathing fresh air so that our cells are getting oxygen. He said, sunshine, 
every day we, we should let our eyes be exposed to the sun. Never should we look at the sun, our eyes will tell us that. But isn't it nice to look at the early morning and the late afternoon sun? And what Dr. Neil Nedley found is that that resets our circadian rhythm. That's why I can tell you I've been in the US two weeks. I left home two weeks on a Thursday, two weeks ago. And one night I woke at 2 a.m. and couldn't sleep again. So I conquered my jet lag, how? By implementing <laughs> these laws. And the day after I didn't get much sleep, well, I slept very well from nine till two. I went out in the sunshine. You even can just go out with your eyes closed and then you can put your head up to the sun and the rays from the sun will go through the skin. And then you can put your head down and open your eyes and your eyes will be used to the sun then. What Dr. Neil Nedley found was that the eyes are a window to the brain and that your eyes are an extension of your brain. So when the ultraviolet rays from the sun go through neurochemical pathways and hit the pineal gland, it resets your body clock. So I found it a great remedy for jet lag is to let your eyes be outside in the sunshine. Your circadian rhythm is the rhythm that your brain and thus your whole body runs at. And that sunshine, especially the first hour of light in a day, that helps to reset your body clock, also helps you to sleep better at night. So your eyes need sun because your eyes are taking the sun through to the brain. William Bates also showed that we need to stop the stimulants because they are dehydrating not only the body but the eyes. He also showed how sleeping at night is essential for the eyes. A lot of eyes are deteriorating too young today because of too much time on technology but also that our eyes are observing technology when they should be asleep. That really weakens eyes. Exercise increases blood supply to the eyes. Proper diet is nourishing the eyes. Use of water, drinking adequate water helps to nourish the cells in the eyes and keep that fluid around them. Stress, anxiety can weaken eyesight. It was probably about 15 years ago that a group of scientists discovered a receptor site on the retina called melanopsin. And melanopsin is not involved in sight. Melanopsin is involved in brain function. And the receptor site melanopsin, it absorbs blue light. And the highest source of blue light is sunlight. So being outside, allowing our eyes to absorb those rays from the sun, that blue light is picked up by melanopsin and it increases learning capacity. It increases the body's ability to solve mathematical problems or because our eyes are outside. Yes, the devices have blue light, but it's a different frequency. So no, the devices don't do the same thing. What also they discovered is that when the ultraviolet rays from the sun go through neurochemical pathways and hit the pineal gland, that helps you to sleep better at night and it boosts your serotonin. Serotonin is your mood hormone. If you want to feel good, go and sit in the sun. Don't you feel good on a sunny day? So the sun can also boost the mood. Any part of your body that has a problem, put it in the sun. Find a spot in your house where you can put it in the sun. One lady testified she had, uh, she, had, um, she had abnormal cells on her cervix and she decided not to, not to have her cervix cut out. She decided to change her diet, to start eating more nourishing food, start to implement these laws. And every day she would lay out in the sun and she would bare her abdomen 
and she could feel those sun's rays penetrate deep, deep. And she believed that that was part of her healing journey. So I trust you'll look at the sun a little bit differently now and see that it's not the enemy in the sky, it is the doctor in the sky. You can over visit that doctor and you will get burnt. Absolutely.